Shabbat Shalom. So the Shavuot is upon us in about, in what, 12 days, 11, 12 days, so less than two weeks. And I uh, just want to share some thoughts that the board mandated me to share. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> No, but, but that makes sense. It makes sense to speak of these things in the advent of the Shavuot. It makes sense to speak of the Holy Spirit that is given, that was given on Shavuot. And it makes sense for the Spirit to be given on Shavuot because Shavuot is the holiday of giving. The Torah was given on Shavuot, therefore the Holy Spirit is also given on Shavuot. All the other holidays, there was nothing given like that. There were th things happened, but nothing was given. This, this is when something actually was given. And um, <laughs> just like when Moses went up the mountain, Psalm 68 talks about Moses saying he took captivity captive and brought gifts to men. The, the captivity means the Torah, according to Midrash, she took the Torah captive, so to speak, from the angels. When the angels would say, why do we give this to flesh and blood? They're going to you know, break it and violate it, just make it profane. God, don't give it to them. And Moses says to angels, well, you can keep it. Can you, like, not murder and stuff? You know, can you, well, I'm paraphrasing. Midrash doesn't say that. It's particular. And God says, oh, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, here you go. So... That's how he kind of argued his way out of, to, to get the Torah according to Midrash, right? So he took the Torah and brought it to people. And so that's the, that's the time when the Ruach HaKodesh is also given to, to the disciples on Shavuot, uh, to the 120 in the upper room. And, and the only uh, association for the 120 that I could find uh, from the Tanakh is from the Second Chronicles, 5, verse 11 through 14, when the temple was inaugurated, Solomon's temple was inaugurated, this is what it says, and came to pass, and the Kohanim came out of the holy place, for the, all the Kohanim that were present had consecrated themselves without regards to divisions. All the Levite singers, Asaf Heman Yudutun, their sons, their relatives, dressed in fine linen, cymbals, harps, and lyres, were standing at the east end of the altar, and with them were 120 Kohanim blowing trumpets. Then it came to pass that when the trumpets and singers joined as one to extol and praise the Lord, and when the sounds of trumpets, cymbals, musical instruments, and praise the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever, grew louder, it grew louder, the temple and the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud, just like in the book of Acts in chapter 2, there was a fire that fell, this, you know, cloud smoke. <laughs> The Kohanim could not stand to minister because the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. So that was, that was the uh, description of the inauguration of the, of the first temple. 120 Kohanim were blowing trumpets and, you know, the Spirit of God fell. What else? It was the Ruach HaKodesh. The Spirit of God fell and, and filled the temple. The presence of God filled the temple. The house that was later destroyed. And, you know... The thing is, like, with Ruach HaKodesh, when you read the passages in the New Testament, we, have it, we get an impression. I was talking to a friend of mine this week, and he said, well, you know, there's this impression that Ruach HaKodesh was only given in Shavuot, and it wasn't there before. Um, and, and actually, there are scriptures in the New Testament that would make you, make you think so. They're quite, quite explicit, really. It's when Yeshua said, uh, talked about the rivers of living water flowing out of their... Uh, in bellies or in, in, in inside, right? Is he was, it says that he was speaking about the Ruach Kodesh, but the Ruach Kodesh has not been given yet. So yeah, there are explicit passages in the New Testament that says the Ruach Kodesh hasn't been given yet. But then there are passages in the, in the Old Testament, in the Tanakh, clearly speaking about the Ruach Kodesh being given to certain people, right? Uh, there are numerous passages in the Old Testament like that. Um, and I heard explained that, okay, that's different, because in the Old Testament, the, the Spirit of God was upon the people, and in the New Testament, it's inside the people. But that's not true, 
Because in the Old Testament, it says the Spirit of God was in Bezalel, who was building the temple. He had in him the Spirit of God, Spirit of wisdom, understanding, knowledge to do all the work. And then Joshua, Yehoshua bin Nun, uh, he has, uh, put your hand on Joshua, but he has in him the Spirit of God. So it's inside of him, not upon him. I mean, there are passages where the Spirit come upon somebody, but also there are passages where the Spirit was inside somebody. So that doesn't really work. Um, and... And there's like entire schools of prophets were there. They were full of, of course, all prophets prophesied by the Holy Spirit. What else? Um, the word, the combination of words, Ruach HaKodesh, only actually mentioned three times in the Tanakh. So yeah, it's, not, it's mentioned, but not a lot. Uh, one of them is David when he, in the Psalm, Psalm 51, says, It says, don't cast me out of your presence. So you're holy, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. That's one passage. And the other one is Isaiah 63, uh, verses 10 through 14. It says, in all their affliction, he was afflicted. In all the Jewish people affliction, he, God, was afflicted. So the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and his mercy, he redeemed them. Then he lifted them and carried them all the days of old. But they've rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned to become their enemy. He himself fought against them. Then his people remembered the days of old, the days of Moses. Where is he who brought them through the sea with the shepherd, with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he who put among them his Ruach HaKodesh, his Holy Spirit, who caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses, who divided the waters before them, by the way, with the spirit of his nostril, well, with the breath of his of his mouth, to make himself a name forever, who led them through the depth like a horse in the desert. They did not stumble like cattle that go down to the valley. The Ruach, the spirit of the, of the Lord, gave them rest. So you led your people to make yourself a glorious name. So we have this passage in Isaiah where the Holy Spirit clearly leads the people out of the, when the Holy Spirit leads the people out of Egypt into the desert. But, you know, but the Holy Spirit, the people later on, they have spurned them and, and did all kinds of things that caused the temple to be destroyed. But, so there are these passages in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, there are undeniably more passages. You can't deny it. There's much more. There are, there are passages in the Old Testament, but the New Testament is much more than passages. Uh, and it described uh, why it's more, because it seems like there is, or not seems like, but there is this, you know, and even though in the Old Testament the Holy Spirit also dwelt upon the Gentiles, you think that, I mean, you think that Gentile, it wasn't dwelling upon the Gentiles in the Old Testament. It was like Balaam. He was a Gentile. He had a Holy Spirit. He was a bad guy, but he nevertheless. So there are instances, but those instances, there's not a lot of them. There, there, there's, there are there, but, but they're kind of limited. In the New Testament, there's much more. There's this democratization of the Holy Spirit described by Peter in the book of Acts where he says that he quotes from Joel, the prophecy says, so it will be afterward, afterward of what? That's a good question. I'll pour out my Holy Spirit, my Ruach on all flesh, my, my Ruach on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Young men will see visions. Also on male and female servants, I'll pour out my Holy Spirit in those days. So people who are unlearned didn't go to the school of the prophets. Apparently they also can receive the Holy Spirit. We just saw the movie, what is Harriet, in Netflix about Harriet Tubman. And it's a good film, actually. And they show, which I'm surprised, they show like she was led by the Holy Spirit. God told her what to do and not to do. That, that you know, hero of, of the, the, all this, you know, godless people today. <laughs> she was a deeply religious person who was led by the Holy Spirit in everything that she did. And she was not learned. She couldn't even read, right? So that, that can happen. I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth, blood, fire, pillars of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord. Then all who call upon the name of the Lord will escape. For in Mount Zion, Jerusalem, there will be rescue, as the Lord has said among the survivors whom the Lord is calling. So Peter quotes this Joel 2 passage saying, in the end of days, I'll pour out in my spirit on all flesh. And everybody will... Thing is, like, end of days is kind of a, you know, it's a stretchy thing, you know, because it's still with 2,000 years and we're still here. It seems like it's kind of close. <laughs> but, but we're still here 2,000 years later. So, you know, it's, you know, you cannot really pinpoint saying that that's exactly the time. Prophecy in that regard, prophecy is multi-layer and is fulfilled in different times in different manner. 
And that's why it's in the Bible. The prophecy, the fact that the prophecy in the Bible means it's for posterity, for all generations. That means if it, even if it was fulfilled in the generation past, it's still there's, there is element of fulfillment of that in the generation future. That's why it's in the Bible. And um, so is, is the difference then is just in, 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 in number, in, in quantity of, of uh, the, uh, in the quantity of, uh, Description of the Holy Spirit or, you know, mentioning of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Is that the only difference? Well, Yeshua uses the, the term for the Holy Spirit, parakletes, paraclete. Parakletes, uh, translated, um, you know, sometimes translated as comforter or advocate or helper or some like a come along, somebody who's like next to you to support your supporter. Um, all, none of them are none of them are sufficient uh, to translate uh, the, the, what Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit does. But nevertheless, you know what, what can you do? You can only do so much. Right? Translating. So so he says Yeshua says about the Holy Spirit in, in John fourteen fifteen. It says, "If you love me, you keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he and he will give you another Parakletes, that person, so he may be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth." whom the world cannot receive because it does not behold him or know him. You know him because he abides with you and, and will be in you. I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer behold me, but you will behold me because I live, you will also live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. For he who has my commandments and keeps them, thank you, Sally, <laughs> is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. So this helper in this, in this particular verse, he is like, he's helping what? He's helping to keep the commandments, he says, I'm going to be gone, but I will send you the helper. And if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So he the Holy Spirit helps to, to, to keep the commandments. I mean, before Yeshua, uh, what was it what, different commandments or the same commandments? Yeshua says, I'll give you the new commandment to love one another just like I love you. But is it really new? Yeshua says it is. In 1 John 2, it says, Loved ones, I am not writing a new commandment to you, but an old commandment, one you had from the beginning. This old commandment is the word you have heard. Which word is that? That's perhaps the testimony of Yeshua, the good news. Yet I am writing you a new commandment to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is fading and the true light is already shining. This is really confusing. I, I am giving you an old command. I'm not writing you a new command. I'm writing you an old commandment. Here, no, I'm writing you a new command. Which one is it, John? Make up your mind. <laughs> the Holy Spirit makes new, makes the commandment new. That's what I think. It's my, I may be wrong. But what I think is the Holy Spirit makes the commandment new to see it with the new eyes as fulfillable. You know, there are four levels of fulfillment of the Torah according to the mystics. One is I uh, want to, I see the Torah, I want to, I want to keep the Torah. Second one, uh, I want to keep the Torah. I can keep the Torah, actually. The second one is, oh, I can't keep the Torah. And the fourth one, I don't want to. Um, it's, the, it's that progression that one would, would go through without help. Without help, one will end up in this particular place. If one is honest with themselves, they'll end up in this place. Either they're going to just do a lot of activity and not think, or they're going to de get depressed and pop Prozac. But the Holy Spirit is who God sends to help in this predicament. Amen. All this good all is not bad. It is good. It is good to have Mashiach with us and, and maybe not send the Holy Spirit. It's good to have him with us and kind of hold our hands and teach us all these things. And, 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 and so he is with us. It's really good. You don't fast when Mashiach is with you. 
It says in the Luke 5, it says Yeshua said, when there was a question, why don't your disciples fast like those of John and the Pharisees? Yeshua said to them, you cannot make the guests of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them, can you? But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, they will fast in those days. Now he also telling them the parable. No one tears a patch from new garment and use it on old garment. Otherwise he'll rip the... Uh, New, new, and the patch will, new, will not, not match the old. No one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the new wine will burst the wineskins. If wine will be spilled, the skins will be destroyed. But the new wine must be put in fresh wineskins. No man who drinks old wine wants new because he says the old one is better. What does that mean? <laughs> you think the new is better, but no, there is the sentence, the old is better. It is good for Mashiach to be with us, but that's not to be all the time. There'll be a new situation that's probably going to be tougher, and that's okay. It is good for Yeshua to be around, but when he's taken, then at least we can learn and be on our own and grow. But when he's taken, then what? It says in Lamentation 420, it says, says the, the anointed, the Mashiach of the Lord, the breath of our nostrils, our life, was captured in their pits of, pits of whom we have set under his shadow we will live among the nations, says Jeremiah in Lamentation. Mashiach was taken away from us. As, as a result, he starts the book. It says, He says, As the city is, how desolate lonely sits the city, once so full of people. She who was once graced among the nations has become like a widow. The princes among the provinces have become forced laborers. That temple of Shlomo that was dedicated with such such glorious experience of the fill and the Holy Spirit that was destroyed. What are we going to do? That's the, the, in the words of the Naomi Shemer song, you know, you know, the Yerushalayim Shel Zahav song? That's from Lamentations. She, she got it. That's what she used in her song. And Yerushalayim was liberated a month later. Bitterly she weeps at night. Her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, there is no one to comfort her. All her friends have betrayed her. They have become her enemies. There is no comforter, says Jeremiah. The Septuagint translate paracleto. There is no paraclete to comfort her. We have a comforter. Mashiach Tzidkenu, the righteous Mashiach, was taken away from us. But we, as opposed to Jeremiah, we have the comforter to endure his absence. It was good to have him with us. But that's okay, because he sent the comforter so we are, so we can endure. It's much better than to sit in dust and ashes. You still fast, but not every day. Another saying of Yeshua, John 15, 26, talks about the Holy Spirit. He says, when the helper, when Parakletos, when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you testify because you have been with me from the beginning. The, the old commandment from the beginning. You have been from the beginning. Testimony of Yeshua, it says, is the spirit of prophecy. All the prophets have prophesied about Mashiach. Because there's nothing, nothing else matters. That's the only thing that matters. Is Mashiach coming and redeeming everybody? When that, when that happens, nothing else matters. That's the only thing that matters, the only important thing. What else, what else is there to, 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 to look for? The curtain was ripped as the waters of the sea with the, when God sent his Ruach. He says, Ruach Kadim, he said, the east wind to, to, to split the sea, but he sent the Ruach to split the sea. 
And they were able to cross, guided by the Holy Spirit, they were able to cross into the liberty. We are able to cross into the liberty by the sacrifice of Mashiach, which opened the curtain. We can do that. And now we can testify of that. And we testify of that through the Ruach HaKodesh, which is the spirit of prophecy, which is the testimony of Mashiach Yeshua. We testify of what the prophets of old dreamed to look at, and we use gift of, gifts of the spirit to do so. That is, that is what the Holy Spirit does in us. It's Yeshua living in us to provide a testimony of who he is and what he did for us. There is also another aspect. John 16, 12, Yeshua says, I still have much more to tell you, <laughs> really. But you cannot handle it just now. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak of his own, but whatever he hears, he will tell you. And he will declare you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said, the Ruach will come from what is mine and declare it to you. Just like Moses, when he had the spirit of God and God said, take from your spirit, I'll take from your spirit and I'll put on the 70 elders. And they'll help you out. <laughs> they'll be your helpers, right? The 70 elders. And he did that in the book of Numbers 11. He separated from Moses and put it on 70 elders, the Holy Spirit, another example of the Holy Spirit coming upon people in the Old Testament. But there are two more. It wasn't just the 70. There were also two more. There was it was Eldad and Meidad who were prophesied in the, in the camp, uh, and they were unauthorized. They were, you know, unsanctioned. And Joshua said, stop them. And Moses said, no, I wish everybody was like that. Don't do it. And it's like, think about it. You know, and they were prophesying. What did they, what did they say that he wanted them to stop? Was, were they giving away some secret information? Maybe. Actually, the, the sages have an idea of what they said. There's opinions. One I like most is this. <laughs> it, it, it says, it's Hiskuni. He says, what, did they, what, what were they prophesying about? They were prophesying the war of Gog and Magog. They're prophesying about the war in Gog and Magog. Why? Because in Ezekiel 37, it says this. It's Ezekiel, uh, sorry, 38. Ezekiel 38, 17, it says, this is, this, this, thus says the Lord God, Hashem Elohim, are you the one about Gog? It says the prophecy, this chapter 38 starts, you know, prophesy against like uh, Gog, El Gog Eretz Magog. Like prophesy at the, uh, to, to, to Gog, uh, land of Magog, right? Thus said, Lord God, are you the one that I spoke about, Gog, about you in former times? Through my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied in those days, uh, the translator says, for many years, because, but the word in Hebrew is, is shanim, but shanim, you can read shnaim. Shnaim means two. Like, in those days, two. <laughs> that I would bring you against them. So these are the Eldad and Medad. Okay, fine, but what, is that the only two prophets? But the, thing, the funny thing is, like, you look at their name, Eldad Medad, and you look at the beginning of Ezekiel chapter 38, it says, Elgog Magog. Is only one letter shift from Gimel to Dalit. <laughs> El Dad, El Gog, you shift to Dalit, you, you get El Dad. Magog, you shift to Dalit, you get Medad. You get the names of these two guys. <laughs> what that means, who knows? No. <laughs> Perhaps it's connected to the two witnesses of Revelation. I don't know. But we prophesy, I mean, through the Holy Spirit, about things that are to come. And all these things, comfort, testimony, prophecy, all of these things, think about. Because the war of Gog and Magog, what's, 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 what's the deal about that? It's not the war that we are interested in. It's the deliverance that comes after. It's the fact that Gog is brought for his own destruction. It's the fact that this is the final deliverance. I mean, there is opinion whether the war of Gog and Magog is, is the World War III or World War IV. You know, maybe, maybe both. 
Because the book of Revelation says World War IV, it's after a thousand years, Gog comes, you know, after the millennium, but maybe Gog comes before too, maybe it's a different, I don't know, whatever. It's, there, 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 there are ways to see it both ways, elements, right? Regardless, it's some kind of a last battle that we're delivered. We're delivered from both. But, and so the, the prophecy, the point of the prophecy, not to say this catastrophe will come. The point of the prophecy says the evil will be destroyed. That's the prophecy. The Gog of this evil will be destroyed forever and ever. That will be the deliverance that will come. And this is what we prophesy about. We we'll speak about through the spirit of prophecy, testimony of Yeshua. So all these things comforting us. Testimony of Mashiach. The prophetic words about things that are to come. All of these things are only relevant in the context of Mashiach Yeshua. All of the things of the Holy Spirit are only relevant in the context of Mashiach. Comfort, because Mashiach is not here. Testimony of Mashiach and, and the prophecy of him returning. Past, present, and future. Comfort because of the past that happened. Testify in the present of what he's doing in my life. And the future of what's going to happen. It's all encompassing thing of the Ruach HaKodesh that is given to us. That is what Ruach HaKodesh accomplishes. Therefore, question. We don't see much of this these days. We see, we read in the, in the book of Acts, there was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There is always that says that this is seized. I don't entertain those. It's not scriptural. But, but, it, but the fact remains, we don't see it much. We don't see it much. We, see it, we don't see it even continuously in the book of Acts. We see it sporadic. We see the first outpouring in Acts chapter 2, and then we see the second outpouring in Acts chapter 4. So there, 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 there are waves of the Spirit that comes. If there is a wave that comes, it means what? It means a wave that leaves. So it comes and goes. It comes and goes. The Holy Spirit comes and goes. And as we know here as well, I mean, there's some revivals here and there. It comes and then it goes. And revival goes and revival comes and goes. Same thing. What do we do? What do we do to engender that? Can we? Is it in our, in our, in our strength to, to attract the Holy Spirit, to make the Holy Spirit manifest? Is it in our strength? Well, no, because we're not God. God is sovereign. is the one who does this thing. We cannot... We cannot schedule a revival. But what we can do is we can focus and set our minds completely on Yeshua, the author and finisher of, his, of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross and the shame thereof, and sat at the right hand of God. And he came and he gave us the gifts of the Holy Spirit to testify about it. So if we set our minds of his interest, if he put him first, front and center, making him the only focus of our life, the Spirit will come to help us and assist us in all these things. And this is what will make our testimony effective. This is what will make us achieve the purpose for which we are sent. So this generation is not going to go for another loop. And he'll come back. And all Israel shall be saved. This is, this is what I want for the Shavuot, for me at least. You know, I, I don't know. You know, I don't know how that's going to happen. But, but we'll see. You know? Schedule it. Well, Shavuot is scheduled. Shavuot is on June 12th. So it is scheduled. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Schedule myself <laughs> to do what I need to do. Father in heaven, we, we thank you, we bless you, Lord. We pray, Lord, for you to send your Holy Spirit upon us, Lord. We know that your Holy Spirit doesn't dwell in dirty places. Lord, we pray so that we can be able to, we'll be able to clean, cleanse ourselves. We will be able to abstain from all things evil. We'll be able to keep our house clean. We'll be able to keep our lives clean, Lord. And set our eyes upon Mashiach Yeshua. And be the testimony and be worthy of his calling and his purpose. Father in heaven, we pray that we'll be the light to your people Israel. We pray for the Messianic movement to be the head and not the tail of the people of Israel to show who Yeshua is, Lord. Finally, we pray, Father, for uh, an opportunity to speak the words of, of the good news of Evangelion, of the good message to the ears of your people Israel. And for them it is news, Lord. The good news, the Basarot Tavot, Yeshot Venechamot, the good news of salvation, consolation, and uh, to, 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 to your people, Lord. So, that, so it will be fulfilled what is written about, about the, the messenger, how blessed are on the hills are the one who brings the good news of salvation and consolation, telling to Zion, your God reigns. Lord. Lord, we pray that this will be fulfilled in us, Lord, what is written by your servants, the prophets. Lord, we pray, Father, for Israel to be saved, Lord. Lord, we are so hard-pressed from all sides. Lord, we are in distress. Our nation is in distress. 
Israel is in distress, Lord. Lord, open the hearts of the people of Israel to the message of Mashiach Yeshua in this generation. We are like sheep without a shepherd, Lord. Help us, Lord, to show who the good shepherd is. We pray this in Yeshua's name.